We're uh, spending a little time today in Second Peter 1, 3 through 9, and this is uh, Wednesday, December 14th, and it says, As His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of Him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence to add to your faith, virtue, to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, and to, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and finally to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. So we're adding to our brotherly kindness this generous love, this, this uh, godly love, this love, this charity that comes from God. I want to read this little story. It's uh, a man found a cocoon of a butterfly and one day a small opening appeared and he sat and watched the butterfly for several hours as it struggled to force its body through that little bitty hole. Then it seemed to stop making any progress. It appeared as if it had gotten as far as it could go and it could go no further. So the man decided to help the butterfly. He took a pair of scissors and snipped off the remaining bit of the cocoon. The butterfly then emerged easily. The man continued to watch the butterfly because he expected that at any moment the wings would enlarge and expand to be able to support the body, which would contract in time. Nothing happened. In fact, the butterfly spent the rest of its life crawling around with a swollen body and shriveled wings. It never was able to fly. What the man, in his kindness and haste, did not understand was that the restricting cocoon and the struggle required for the butterfly to get through the tiny opening were part of God's way of forcing fluid from the body of the butterfly into its wings so that it would be ready for flight once it achieved its freedom from the cocoon. Sometimes struggles are exactly what we need in our lives. If God allowed us to go through our lives without any obstacles, it would cripple us. We would not be as strong as we could be. We could never fly. I asked for strength and God gave me difficulties to make me strong. I asked for wisdom and God gave me problems to solve. I asked for prosperity and God gave me brain and brawn to work, brain and brawn to work. I asked for courage and God gave me danger to overcome. I asked for love and God gave me troubled people to help. I asked for favor, God gave me opportunities. I received nothing I wanted. I received everything I needed. The whole reason why we spent these weeks in this tremendous study of 2 Peter 1, 3 through 9 is that so you and I could literally fly with God. Yes, we need one another, but that need should never prevent us from applying ourselves to the diligent task of adding these seven great qualities to our faith. I promise you there will be tremendous struggles in adding these qualities to the conduct of your life. Seek not to escape those struggles, but rather embrace them in order to mature in your faith. So as we're gonna discuss for the next couple of days, this last one, love, let's kind of do a review. In the third verse, in the Message Bible, the script, scripture clearly states that everything that goes into a life of pleasing God has been miraculously given to us by getting to know personally and intimately the one who invited us to God. So our faith must be rooted and grounded in the person, personal and intimate knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Secondly, God is allowing us by his promises to share in his divine nature. His spirit comes to indwell us. His glory begins to be reflected in us. And the power that raised Christ from the dead becomes active and mighty strength in us. Revelation, spiritual wisdom and understanding become a part of our everyday life. 
In our first lesson, we discovered that basic faith has three main ingredients. One, a firm conviction, producing a full acknowledgement of God's revelation or truth. Two, a personal surrender to him. And three, a conduct inspired by such surrender. So the first quality we add to our faith is virtue, which we equated with good character. To add virtue to faith, we must understand what virtue is. It's moral excellence, which causes us to live well the Christian life. It's good character. It's courage and conduct. It's rigor of mind. It's energy to stand for our basic faith and live it when everyone else might be against us. It is a great zeal for our faith, and we give all diligence to this process. Every effort and earnestness must be applied by our will and energy to prevent us from slipping into the old or outdated lifestyle unbecoming to a follower of Christ. We must have rigor of mind, whereby we pursue with great effort what God has called us to do. The second quality we studied was knowledge, which guides the good character away from ignorance. The spiritual understanding strives to think out the principles of its life and action. It's the active discernment of the ways of God as we walk out our ways here on earth. Spiritual understanding is the intelligent application of the principles that we learn, principles of the New Testament. The third quality we studied was temperance or self-control. Vine's word study of the New Testament word states that the right use of the various powers bestowed by God upon man demands the will be brought under the operation of the Spirit of God. Through temperance, the Christian disciplines body and spirit so that he or she is more capable of striving for his or her spiritual reward. We then talked about a number of ways to to put alert discipline into practice, and, and two of these were these. Practice the presence of Jesus. Cherish habitually the sense of God's presence around your life. And secondly, his learn to respond to the promptings, the checks, the convictions of the Holy Spirit to walk in righteousness. That's a little bit of what we've covered so far. We're gonna pick this up some more of that review before we talk about this charitable love. Let's pray together. Let's ask God to help us add with all diligence these things that we've been talking about. Father, we want to add moral excellence, good character, virtue to our faith. That firm conviction and that complete surrender where we just yield to you, Lord, and, and we walk it out and apply it. And then we're supposed to add and uh, knowledge to that that virtue and that that spiritual wisdom that comes when we get to know who God is, who he's manifested himself in Christ Jesus, who made an atoning death for us. And we follow that up by adding self-control, body, mind, and spirit. We're, we're letting everything in our life be controlled by the spirit of living God. Help us today so that the end result can be that we're fruitful in the kingdom of God. Thank you, amen. Contemplate these things, walk through it again, trust God and add to your faith these seven virtues we've been talking about. God bless you, have a great day.